Good afternoon, everyone. Glory to God. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back, Keith. We're so happy to have you. Uh, you've been away a little while, but we have been praying for you. So, so we are praying to God that uh, you are in a good place. Whether you might not feel it or not, God's saying that he's heard, he's heard our prayers and it has gone up to him. It's gone up to him. It's been gone up into the throne room of grace and uh, he's there making intercession for us. That's what the scripture says. Jesus is there making intercession for us. And that's what we're grateful to God for. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, Daniel. I can see you're on your way, on your journey, probably to see your granddad. I hope your granddad is good and doing well. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Give God thanks. Good. Welcome to Nisha. Welcome, Donna. Welcome, Ziri. Welcome. Welcome Such a blessing to uh, have another opportunity to, to really just say, Lord, thou art worthy to receive all power and honor and praise and uh, that we can lift up the name of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ because he is truly worthy to be praised. I hope everybody has had a, a good week and um, and uh, it's been a productive one. Um, I hope everyone has uh, you know, felt the prayers of the saints because we have been praying, interceding, on behalf of anybody that might have been discouraged, anybody coming under any attack, whether it be spiritually, emotionally, mentally, we've, we've been coming against any spirit that um, will seek to discourage us, but we just want to continue to remain strong and stay connected, stay connected to the one from where our help comes from, or where our source comes from. Uh, the Bible said we should look, lift up our heads to the hills. From where cometh our help? Our help cometh from the Lord. You know, sometimes we, we are thinking that our help comes from people and God will use people to, to come and help us. But ultimately, it's the Lord that will drop something into their heart. The Lord will speak to them a word about, about a situation and they follow through. And that's why it's important if God speaks a word to you or drops somebody in your spirit that you follow through because that is the Lord. Um, welcome tomorrow. Just join in. Glory to God. Good to have you. And uh, we're just going to worship the Lord. Keith, if you can just bless us with another worship song. And uh, we're going to uh, continue to worship the Lord. Um, if you get another worship song for us. And uh, everybody, I just want you to feel at ease today. I know today, you know, we've got some some news to tell you. But um, I just want you to to know that God is still on the throne. And um, but um, I'll I'll be sharing that a little bit later on. So glory to God, Keith. If you've got another song to minister to us, we're so, so great. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. It's just me, Donna. Uh, Daniel's put a prayer request. He said he's got a prayer request. He's put that in the chat. Daniel, are you available to let us know what your prayer request is? Are you able to speak, Daniel, or not? I'm just looking for it now. I typed it in the thing. Just to pray for my dad, Luciano, uh, to come to, to home church. Is that correct, Daniel? Is that is that your dad or your granddad? No, because I've, I've just come to church now to go home. 
And I, I, the Holy Spirit was like, call your dad to go to, I'm going now to home church, my home church, in my home. And uh, I just called him and he was like, no, 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 not coming, no, no. And I kept saying, no, you're coming. And he kept saying, no, that's no, you're coming. No. In the end, I was like, look, uh, if, if you don't trust the Lord, then you can't trust the Lord, but look, take it easy. I'm going to pray for you. Now, I, we, you know, we, we departed the phone calls and then I just called in you lots of pray. Okay, def de definitely, Daniel. Um, we just ask the we will just ask the Holy Spirit to touch his heart. Uh, the Holy Spirit is we can't force anyone to do anything uh, if they're not willing. But God is the one that will touch their heart, and um, and they will respond according to the the, the will of God for their lives and. Uh, so yeah, Daniel, we'll, we will definitely lift that up, and uh, we will also lift up your granddad as well. Your granddad, um, we have been praying for him, and uh, we know that he's he's over a hundred, and he's had a fall. But praise be to God, I, I pray that he has no broken bones, and no broken. Uh, vessels or but whatever the situation is that God will minister healing and grace and mercy to him so um, we'll pray before um, Keith ministers that song to us I just want you to stretch your heart to Daniel right now and to his family his dad his granddad and just come into agreement with this prayer because it's more, the Bible said if two or three on earth agree, we need more than the one. We need two or three coming into agreement at least. And that we know that about the power of agreement. So we just want to lift up uh, Daniel lift up his father and his granddad so just 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 lift them let's lift up daniel right now father god we thank you for all this day father that you have made we are glorifying your wonderful name we are so grateful to you father god for another opportunity that we can come together and father we know that father god where there's unity there is strength. Father, you said that's where you command the blessing. So, Father, we pray for a spirit of unity this afternoon that will be of one heart, one mind, one desire. Father, our desire right now is to, to really just come before you in thanksgiving and praise to your name, Lord, and to Lord, we ask you to remember Daniel right now, at this time right now. I lift him up. Father, I thank you for all that he is and who, who he is. Lord, I thank you that he's a tower of strength. And Father, thank you that he, you've given him a heart for souls. And Father God, it's not your will that any should perish, that, but all come to repentance. And Father, Daniel's got a burden for his dad right now. I don't know if the dad's saved, but Father, he just wants the dad to come into fellowship and to come into a, a relationship where it, with you, God. And I pray that, Father God, any stubborn spirit, any hardened heart, anything that will be trying to stop him from, Lord God, I come against every plan of the enemy that will try to harden his heart right now. We destroy it now from off of him right now. Father, we call his name Luciano. We'll be released now from every grip of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Loose your whole Satan from off of his life in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just lift up um, Daniel's granddad to you, Lord God. We know that God has had a fall, but Father, he's still alive. And we give you glory that, Father, use us 
preserved his life. And I pray for a, a supernatural healing to take place in his body right now, where anything has been dislodged or shaken up or anything that has been bruised or harmed or any part of his body that's hurting at this time, Lord. I pray that, Father, you will continue to pour out that supernatural healing to his body from the crown of his head right down to the sole of his feet. We speak strength to his body, to his bones, strength to any bruise or any battered part. Father God, I speak strength to his heart, his arteries, his lungs. Father, his breathing, whatever has been affected, Lord, I speak divine health to him right now that you raise him up. Father, I commit, Father God, the rest of this service to you, Lord. And anybody else that's having any, any uh, infirmity in their body, any pain. Father, anybody that's having any anything of their body hurting right now, Father, whether it be Father, emotional hurt, whether it be spiritual hurt, whether it be physical hurt. Father, we come against that pain right now in the name of Jesus. We come against that confusion right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against every plan of the enemy to really trap and to hold us down. We command a release now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, God. We continue to pray a covering over each one of our lives, Lord, that you protect us from all harm, all danger. Father God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you continue to hold us up and to sustain us, Father God. Even though we might be going through tests and trials or issues, no matter what the problem is, Father, we know that you are very mindful of us. And Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for all what you've done in our lives and all what you're going to do. Father, we know that, God, you are a good, good Father. And Lord, you care so much for us. Father, I pray right now for this service, Father. I commit it into your hand. Father, I thank you for all those that will be coming on. Father, I thank you for all those that will be joining. Father, I pray right now as we invite your Holy Spirit to be in our midst. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Take your place. Move by your power. Deliver, heal, set free. Do what you have to do in every, every single life. Father God, we commit every single home to you. And Father, every extended family member. Father, in the name of Jesus, and Father, we ask your Holy Spirit, Father God, to minister to every hurt, every, every spirit of loss, every spirit of grief, every spirit of sorrow, every spirit of disappointment, every spirit of lack. We destroy every one of those spirits now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we release your peace and release your abundance. Release your grace and your mercy to be multiplied to us. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to Say God. Say welcome to... Those of you who are just joining, good to have Mother Brown on. She hasn't been on for a while. For a couple of weeks, we haven't seen you, but good that you are. Uh, you have joined today, and uh, good to have Maxine, Charmaine, Mikel, uh, Zuri, Tamara, uh, Tanisha, Daniel. Oh, we got two Tamaras, <laughs> Dinah. God bless you all, and Chris, welcome. Um, I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna hand over to uh, Pastor Chris. He's gonna, um, actually, let me just read something. I've got a scripture I would want, well, want to read. Uh, let me just read it, and it's, and it's from, 
Um, it's from First Corinthians, chapter one. Actually, Second Corinthians, chapter one. I'm just going to read a few verses from here, and uh, and then we're just going to be blessed by this word today. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to start from um, verse one. Second Corinthians chapter one. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle, a special messenger, personally chosen representative of Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, and to all the saints, that's God's people throughout all, all of Ikea. Verse two, grace to you and peace. In brackets, it says inner calm and spiritual well-being from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed, grateful, grateful to be praised and adored be the god and father of our lord jesus christ the father of mercy and the god of all comfort verse 4 who comforts and encourages us in every trouble so that we will be able to be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with all the comfort which we ourselves have been comforted by God. Verse five, for just as Christ's sufferings are ours in abundance, they, as they overflow to his followers, so also our comfort, our reassurance, and our encouragement and consolidation in abundance through Christ. But if we are, verse six says, but if we are troubled and distressed, it is for, it is for your comfort and your salvation or if we are comforted and encouraged, it is for your comfort, which works in you when you patiently endure same sufferings, which the same sufferings which are that we experience. And I'll just stop here, verse seven. And our hope for you, our confident expectation of good for you is firmly grounded, assured, and unshaken, since we know, since we know that just as you share as partners in our suffering, so also you share as partners in our comfort. Okay. Amen. Praise be to God. The reason I read that scripture is because God is saying through this scripture here is that he is a God of all comfort. And he will he knows whatever our sufferings we're going through. And when when we experience the comfort of God, and God is saying, we are now able to offer comfort to other people with that same comfort that we've received. Now we're able to share with our brothers and sisters that same comfort that we have been, um, been comforted with. So I just wanted to just um, ask Pastor Chris to just make this announcement um, that we I said I was gonna share about a brother or sister, um, some news that we had recently just um, last night. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Um, greetings, everybody. Um, again, we're here on another Sunday, and we're here to rejoice. 
In all things, we give God thanks. And sometimes when you hear news that ordinarily will not be what we expect, but one thing we have to know is this, is that when someone is in a relationship with God and they've made Jesus their personal Savior and Lord, that their, their future is sealed for eternity. And, um, you know, one, uh, I just have to share with you our, that one of our dear sisters has uh, passed on to be with the Lord. And uh, that's uh, Pansy. And uh, for those of you who don't know Pansy, um, you might not know her in person unless you've actually been at uh, the tent meetings or actually been uh, with us when we were attending services in a building. But she's a dear sister, one that I know and one that I have known for um, about, I would say about 25, 30 years. And uh, I had the pleasure of um, praying with her mother. Um, her mother was miraculously healed, having been um, written off. In other words, she was assigned to her death and God extended her life for two and a half years. Um, I had the privilege of, uh, you know, sharing something at a burial, a tribute. I also had the privilege of uh, burying a, a brother. Again, someone that I know, not as much as the rest of the family. But Pansy, um, she recently um, we prayed for her. When, we prayed for her cause a few she was, weeks ago when she was traveling to go to Jamaica, and we've just had news uh, just late last night that um, Pansy passed away while she was in Jamaica. Yeah, um, and so um, to me, it's a great loss because I not only know her as uh, a sister but I know her as a friend as well. And uh, practically every week she would ring me and uh, I would pray with her concerning many, many issues and to God be the glory. Many, many of them she was able to victoriously go through. And uh, she even rang me on uh, Friday. It was Friday and uh, I had the uh, privilege of praying for her because she rang and said that she has some breathing issues. And uh, so I decreed and declared God's sovereign will over her and prayed with her. And not knowing that it was a sickness that was invariably onto death, um, I heard yesterday that she actually passed away. And I heard very late yesterday, almost midnight, and uh, as I said, it's uh, impacted obviously the whole family and uh, even Grace and I, because as we said, we were always continually kept in contact with her. And so we know that God is a God of comfort. And uh, all I can say um, is that um, one of the things we can desire so many things in our life. And uh, the one thing she desired more so than anything else was to go to Jamaica and to meet with their family and do certain things um, on behalf of her family. And she was a person that was a true giver. And uh, many of the things that she would do is uh, pack barrels and to send to her family and her friends in Jamaica. And she had the opportunity to do that on this occasion. And she had the opportunity to also travel with her daughter and her two children. And, uh, and she met her relations and whatever she decided to do, I believe that whatever happened, she, got, she found peace with God at that moment in time because she did, after many, many, many years, was able to travel to Jamaica and deal with things on a personal level. 
And so we thank God for her life. We do truly remember her. We do love her. And, uh, and we just pray God's strength over her family because God is a God of comfort. And sometimes you, I say we have to sometimes be careful in terms of what we desire because when we desire things, God, our God the Father invariably will meet us according to our desires. And sometimes, you know, what happens is that desire can be so overwhelming that uh, it can take a toll on us. And, uh, and it may, you might not understand what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is this, God fulfilled their desires for her to go to Jamaica, but invariably she didn't return. And uh, I know that she's at rest with the Lord now. And uh, so we must take comfort in that, that she's absent from the body and present with the Lord. And uh, yes, we will no longer see her on the platform, although she wasn't visible. She used to come on as HP. She used to come on as HP. And uh, she is such a beautiful, wonderful person. And as, as I said, it's, uh, I had a personal relationship with her for more than, for about 30 years and members. And so it will be, a cement, uh, in terms of memories, I will hold many fun memories of her. And so I just wanted to share that with you as a family. We are a family here today. And uh, one thing I will always say is this, is that take note of the names that you see on the platform. Take note of them. And when you take note of them, remember them in your prayers. Pray a covering over them. Pray for their health. Pray for their strength. Pray for their peace of mind. Pray more importantly that they're in a a relationship, intimate relationship with God, and that to have that peace with God. The most important thing is to have peace with God, peace with your fellow man, and peace in yourself. And just pray those prayers of blessings over them. And uh, be assured that God, when his time comes, he will call them home to glory and they will be at peace in the presence of him. So I thank God today and uh, bless you, each and every one of you. It's uh, a news that came to me as a shock. As I said, I spoke to her on Friday. And so... Those are both just coming on Master and record that now. Okay, for those that are coming on, um, Marcia and Raphael, um, Jennifer, um, just uh, wanted to share some news that our dear sister in Christ, um, you may have met her on occasions for at the um, at the tent meeting, but it's um, Pansy, and uh, she has passed on, and she. Um, <laughs> she passed. She passed away in Jamaica. What happened? Yeah, she passed away in Jamaica, and uh, it's not with overwhelming sadness. I will miss her immensely, but it's one thing I know is that God I met her at the point of her need at that time, and her overwhelming desire was to go to Jamaica to see her family, see where she was born where she intended even to visit from time to time. And, uh, but God, whatever this, the timing of it is taking her home. And so I will, as I said, always miss her as a person. So bless you. And I just want you to be of good cheer because when we receive news like this, it might seem like, um, doom and gloom and it is not because we rejoice that she's celebrating in the presence of almighty god 
And it's one thing, and that one thing I know is this, is that what kept us, Grace and I, so strong um, when in, in, in regards to the loss of our dear daughter, Cheryl Ann, was to know where she was and that we had to process the reality that sometimes and um, maybe I touch on it as I share the word today. Sometimes we don't always relate to the timing of things, but we cannot say it's not God. And because God is sovereign in taking in, in terms of life, the breath goes back to the Father. We have to recognize that God is in control. And so we celebrate, we celebrate um, Sherlan's life. And we continue to celebrate Cheryl Ann's life, not because of the fact that we don't miss her, but because uh, of the fact that we miss her. But the fact is this, that we know that she had completed her assignment here on earth. And even as parents, we believe that there's so much more that she needs to accomplish posthumously, <laughs> even in her loss, even in her absence, even in her death. And so God has laid so many things on my heart in regards to Cheryl Ann, and you won't believe it. And the time will, I will share it in terms of what, for what Cheryl Ann's lost, what she's able, and the kingdom is able to gain. And so I thank God for any life that has come into contact with, and I'm knowing that they love God. And so bless you, each and every one of you. And thank you for your continued prayers and support. And remember, remember to pray one for another. Pray one for another, cover one another. It's so important. If anything, love one another, be practical. Let your love be real and a sincere thing. And um, you know, whatever you can do, if it's in your power to do it and your ability to do it, do it. Because, you know, sometimes um, when I officiate funerals, I am a little perplexed because sometimes I know the history of the family. And then what happens is on that day, there's an outpouring of emotion and there's uh, flowers and things that people will buy and they lay sat beside on top of the grave, a, 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 a hump. And I think so much effort is taken into celebrating the life after death, but not whilst they're alive. And I say to you, appreciate every person, every loved one that you have, family member, appreciate, do whatever you can do in your power to do it while they're alive. Because when they're gone, you um, many do regret that they weren't able that they didn't do things that they were able to do. And it's something that often stays with people for a long, long time, if not until they pass away themselves. So please, please, if you're looking to appreciate somebody, appreciate them whilst they're still here. Uh, you will find a lot of joy from that. And uh, so I bless you, every one of you, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I, I see a hand that is up. Okay. Aziri, um, I don't know why, if you want to share something, but please do. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Um, I know it's not normally the adult service, but the news actually is uh, left me quite um, um, shocked. You know, uh, I don't know Sister Pansy that much personally, but I do remember sometimes yourself and myself, we drove to her place, I think after one of the love feasts love to feast, drop yeah. some stuff at hers. Mm -hmm. And she said something to me that uh, maybe I'll write her story, you know? And I say, yeah, why not when the time comes? And then this news is quite, is quite uh, shocking. I just wanted to suggest if you don't mind Wow. <laughs> if we could just uh, maybe observe maybe a minute silence in honor of her, and then maybe also say a word of prayer of comfort for, for those who mourn her, including uh, members of Impact Life.
just you know to pay some respect to her memory please Oh, thank you, um, Zuri. Um, yeah, Zuri was sharing that um, when we had the tent meeting, Pansy was the one that always volunteered to do the fried fish. She did absolutely beautiful fish and she contrib contributed, that was her contribution to do the fried fish for the love feast. And I remember as Zuri was saying, um, on this occasion, when we had the, the, the anniversary, we were short of, what was it? Lighters for the, for the Schaefer dishes to actually warm the food. And it was Pansy that rang at the zero minute to say that I've got a whole set of lighters, come and pick them up. And Pastor Chris, Chris, you can share what happened when you and Zoe went to Pansy that day. When you went to Pansy to pick up the lighters, for the thing it was it saved the actual day. Praise be, yeah, praise be to God. Um, I thought Grace was going to continue the story. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there, so I <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's just that um, I'd spoken to Pansy and uh, during the week, and uh, she said that she had uh, given out. Uh, uh, lighters and uh, what it was is that uh, the person was supposed to return it uh, but she never returned it she actually used them all said that she was gonna replenish it and she never did and so I left it like that in a week and uh, people had promised to um, supply us with um, lighters but the reality is this is that um, on the Saturday when we was having the event you know, something um, pro prompted me to ring Grace. And the sto the real story is told that um, Grace was in the area. I s rang Grace and just told her what the situation was with the lighters, that we had to have it for the, the anniversary. And then what happened is that uh, I think I must have spoke to Pansy and uh, she actually said that in the same i think within a i don't know a few hours of us um just before we rang just before i rang her she actually received the lighters out of the blue for the, from the person unexpectedly mm -hmm. unexpectedly mm -hmm. and they were and it's a matter of saying oh they're here the lighters are here I didn't expect them to come, but they're here. And I know that God even used her as a point of contact mm -hmm. for many, many miracles. There's many times we I pray with Pansy concerning many things, and she would testify of how God would heal, God would deliver, God would set free. She was a person that was, you might not have heard it, but she was a person that was full of testimonies. As I said, I prayed with her constantly in regards to many, many situations and she testified of it. And I think the mo the one thing, and I say this not, not because it's me, but the one thing is that she believed in prayer <laughs> because she always had prayer requests and uh, she believed in prayer. And I believe that, and I say this, um, that because she saw her own mother who was on her deathbed, breathing her last breath, and prayer went up for her. And she rose up out of her bed. When all her family members were around her, she really said, God is real, and we serve a mighty real God. And so she believed in prayers. She believed unequivocally, because she would always petition for prayers over her family and family members and to god be the glory she bore testimony of the many things that god accomplished in and through her and so she was a woman of faith she was a woman of faith and she cared a lot about her family and so it may be that her concern sometimes 
overlapped into a sense of anxiety because she loved so much and she wanted so much for so many members of her family and her friends. And so, and I'm saying even reflecting on it, she's at peace with God, but we who are left behind and our family members who I know, they have to deal with a side of burial and everything else. So I just want us to observe just some minutes silence on behalf of just for those of you, it'd be difficult to, if you didn't see her in the flesh, to remember how she looked like, but just to- Just remember that we, uh, we, we prayed uh, about three weeks ago that she was traveling to Jamaica and she was um, so happy to looking forward to her trip and we prayed for um you know for safe journey mercies and that she would have a safe return um well that prayer was met she did arrive safely but she hasn't returned yet but apparently her body is going to be um flown back to england so we pray a safe arrival of her body uh, to come back um, to England because all her grandchildren and all her kids are here in the UK and um, the funeral will be conducted in the UK. So yes, let's just um, just observe a, a minute's silence on behalf of our, our sister. She's one of our family. She's one of our Impact Life family. She, she was not one of the ones that were very vocal, but she was always on and uh, she did her computer would just have HP on it. She wasn't always sure how to type her name in. She wasn't the most um, computer literate, but she knew the computer, how to switch it on and how to get Zoom that she could hear. And when she was ready to ask for her prayer request, she, she certainly did. So let's just observe a minute of uh, silence on behalf of Pansy right now. God bless you. Well, thank you. Pray. Thank you. Um, um, Pastor Chris is just going to pray comfort over every single one of us. When we receive news like this, it's a shock, a shock to our system. So. Praise be to God. And let's be of good cheer. We know where she is. She's in the presence of Almighty God. She's in a better place, actually, than we are at this moment in time. And I know that... Um, I know that uh, it might not feel like it, it might not seem like, but the reality is that she is. And so, you know, in light of that, one thing I will always do is celebrate the life of a believer that transitions from the temporal to the eternal. And we know that she's in eternity at rest with the Father. And so I'm just gonna pray right now, you know, for his grace and his mercy. Father, even in your word, you said, and Jesus declared that I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth for me, though he were dead, though he was with, 
was without life. Though, though he might not have a future, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And Father, we know that we have life in Christ Jesus. And Father, we have an eternity to look forward to, eternity of bliss and eternity of rest. But Father, for those of us that are left behind, we will always feel the absence of that person. Not that it's a sense of love, but the absence. And I know the reality of that with my dear daughter, Cheryl Ann. But we are not one that will grieve as those that have no faith, but we hope and we have an eternal hope that there is much rejoicing and much thanksgiving in heaven. And that, Father, we know that one, at some point in time, we will see her again. And there will be that joy of reunion. And so, Father, I just pray, as you are a God of comfort and a God of mercy, that you touch the hearts of each and every one of us that might identify with her, even as a sister on this platform. I pray that you will give us peace and even speak to us in, the, in this time right now concerning our relationships, near and far, our relationships, and know that you, Father, are not slack concerning your promises, for you wish that none should perish, but all should come to repentance, come to a point of acknowledging your son as Savior and Lord and have that intimacy of relationship with him and knowing Father God with the intimacy of knowing you, that peace will be multiplied to us. And so Father, we thank you and we pray that you strengthen the immediate family and the extended family at this time, children, two children that she has left behind, grandchildren. Father, we pray your comfort over them right now. And we pray, Father, that you meet them at the point of their every need, that they will not lack for, lack for anything concerning your purpose and your will for their lives, for financially, materially, even as they plan, even in the sense of all the funeral arrangements, the recovery of the body, everything, Father God, you will take full control of. You will be the captain at the elm of that, at the front of that ship, steering every decision that they make. Father, you are sovereign and you are Lord. And I pray, Father God, that no evil will befall the family in, in respect of this great transition of a dear loved one right now, Pansy. But Father, that even through death, life will spring forth, that many will testify out of the seed that has been sown, that they too have come to know you and an intimate and a personal relationship. And so Father, we thank you for all your goodness, for all your kindness, and for all your mercy. Father, strengthen us this day, and we continue to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're about to do in our lives. Father, we thank you for everything concerning our dear sister Pansy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise be to God. Um, before we continue, I'd just like Keith to just minister that song that he has ready. Um, if anybody wants to share a tribute or anything afterwards, um, you can feel free to. God bless you. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, for that song. And uh, it's appropriate. Praise be to God. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to share anything at this moment in time. 
um, in reflection, uh, just a word of encouragement, or just to even pray um, in that res in respect of what has been shared this afternoon. But uh, I'll leave it open, and uh, if not, then um, we can sort of continue with the service anyway. But praise be to God. Anybody want to just share anything? in light of what has been shared this afternoon. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Well, look, thank God this is the day that the Lord hath made. We should be glad and rejoice within. And uh, as I said, we're not of people that we mourn, but we rejoice in the transition of our loved one. And uh, there's so much that I can say about life itself. I mean, I've been to <laughs> so many funerals re recently. I just think, oh my God, I was uh, at a funeral on Friday. I, was at a I think I was at a funeral the week before. Um, and I just, uh, there's so many people that are passing. And uh, it makes me reflect on what is true life. Is life about desiring or just uh, having a tick box that we tick off everything that we feel that we deserve? Or is it about being in God's perfect will? And, uh, you know, one thing is that we have to know that we're in the perfect will of God. What God desires for us is the best place to be. And um, I, I just, as I'm here, I'm, I'm just going to share um, briefly what God um, said to me and shared with me. Um, of a truth, when I heard the news, I, <laughs> I, was, uh, I couldn't speak for a minute. And it's not often that I lose, I haven't got anything to say, but I, I was, and even Grace sort of uh, exclaimed, what is it, what is it? Because she thought it might be my mother, you see. And uh, I said, no, it's Pansy. And uh, the reason being is that I was at, yesterday I was celebrating um, someone's birthday. And... Uh, it, it Sorry, I didn't realize my camera wasn't on. You see, I wasn't even focusing on myself. But uh, I was I was at um, a birthday yesterday. And uh, the thing is, I whatever happened is that Grace had hold of my phone. And uh, she had put it in her bag. But during that time, so many people were contacting me in regards to the passing of our dear sister and I didn't see it. It's only when I returned home and it was close to midnight and I saw it and I thought, and I, I just read it and I couldn't, read a message from a dear um, niece and I couldn't believe what it said. And so I was in momentary sense of wow, shock. I don't know if it was, um, Delayed, uh, delayed reaction, but what it is is that I then reflected on the, the people that are so close to me. I reflected on my dear sort of daughter passing. I reflected on my mum, who's um, obviously in her advanced years now and uh, celebrated her 94th year and she's been challenged. And I reflected on people, people, and uh, I, I, I experienced something yesterday that I've never actually seen before. And someone who was celebrating their birthday, but in celebrating their birthday, they celebrated, that person celebrated the birthdays of other people <laughs> and celebrated their achievements. And so they had, um, 
or celebrated their kindness mm. towards her. And um, I've never seen that before. Someone who's actually celebrating a, a milestone birthday, who is celebrating other people. And I thought to myself, that is so remarkable. And I've lived a long time. <laughs> I said, it's so remarkable and so fitting that what we should do always is look beyond ourselves to see the needs of other people and be a, a comfort to other people and a, a strength and encouragement to other people and acknowledge the things that they have contributed to your life. And as I said, you do it while they were alive. She was giving presents to those people whose birthdays were pending. In other words, around the same time around the same time the same month with, within the same month or within a month of her having her birth to celebrate in her birth and, and there were many there were about eight there were about eight and it was she was given a cake to each one given a cake to each one that's remarkable a cake to each person <laughs> and then she was also giving out flowers and she was giving out thank you cards and she was i mean we received a thank you from her and uh i'm not saying because of what we did but you know she obviously she appreciated us as being a, a pastor to her she's not on at the moment but it's such a blessing to see love and one thing i've always said from this platform is that if anything let this platform be foundational in terms of expressing the true love of Christ. Let your love be sincere and a real thing. And um, for my, me, it's a desire to have each and every one of us, each and every one of us, walk in the love of God, walk in fellowship with God, walk like god himself <laughs> you might say what, what you're talking about i'm talking about the reality of having the life of christ on the inside of you knowing that the love of god has been shed abroad in your hearts by the holy spirit and you know it's not only that but living a life of complete a self-emptying life you become selfless you pour out yourself the spirit the inner man the spirit and you're able to touch people's lives and as i said it's a remarkable act of love an expression of love and i do know the person and you you all know the person and um i bless god and i thank god let us be a family a true family and be a support one for another. And um, the the word that I just really wanted to share, it may well be a, a continuation of last week, but uh, the one thing that I, in, in, impacted me was three verses in the Bible, three main scriptures in the Bible. And it speaks about a person who had remarkable faith a remarkable trust in God. And um, I'm, I just want you to turn with me to um, turn with me to Genesis, um, Genesis uh, chapter five. And uh, and <laughs> And it's from, from um, let me just see this. Um, uh, I'm going to read from verse 21, Genesis chapter 5 and verse 21. And it says, when Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. And verse 22 says, Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God. 300 300 years after the birth of Methuselah and had other sons and daughters. 
verse 23 so all the days of enoch were 365 years so he lived for 365 years and in reverent fear and obedience enoch walked with god and he was not found among men because god took him away to be home with him <laughs> and uh, i just go down to um verse 27 so methuselah lived 969 years and he died so one was taken home enoch enoch who walked in habitual it was natural for him to walk in habitual fellowship with god to the point he had such a union and such deep intimate relationship with god that god said forget death forget that one you're not going to taste that i'm just going to translate you into my presence in other words beam me up scotty i don't know if you um watch star trek but in other words he never experienced death because of his relationship close relationship with father god jehovah god and it showed me some things about god himself how he looks on us as his children and it's all about love and obedience it's all about reverent fear the word of god says work out our own salvation with fear and trembling with reverence unto god for it is god that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure he works with that winner within us and he constrains us and he prompts us to do his will to walk like he walks he compels us to love like he loves and you might say well how can that be we can develop that relationship through continually being obedient to god's word and i've spoken about that we can continue to build a relationship by putting god first putting aside our own personal ambitions and putting god's kingdom first we have to be kingdom minded we have to be god minded we have to be christ minded in everything we do in other words it's not just about having a tick box and ticking off all the things that we desire in our life and then saying god is good i have a testimony but it's actually about entering yourself to god's perfect will and so so what you're doing you're allowing god to operate and move through you whatever way he wants to irrespective of what, whether from a, a a human perspective it seems great or it seems like the worst thing that you can ever experience. We have to know that if it's in Christ, it is perfect. If it's God's will, it is perfect. And even in suffering, we know that we can walk in the perfect will of God, even in suffering, know that there is an eternal reward that is awaiting us if we remain faithful to God and we love, him, love God with all our hearts. It doesn't talk about the life of Enoch, but in those three scriptures, three scriptures of the Bible only afforded to him. <laughs> but in those three scriptures, he has accomplished something that probably only one other person has accomplished, which is never seeing death, being translated into the presence of God because of the relationship the intimate relationship it has with the father and um and just to show you something he was 300 and 
65 years old when he died. Let me say something. Being blessed of God isn't about longevity of life. In other words, longevity of life isn't, isn't about how long you live. It's about your divine purpose in God. Methuselah lived to 969 years, which are a whole lot more, about three times the length of time that uh, Enoch lived. But it says nothing about Methuselah's life. It was a life of fellowship and intimacy that spoke more as far as God was concerned than the fact that I lasted the longest on this earth. I'm just showing you something. And so we have to know, and to tell you the truth, what, was, what is it so remarkable about Enoch? He walked in faith. He walked in complete trust in God. And you might say, how is that, Chris? How is that? Because it's mentioned. It's mentioned as one of the pantheons of faith in Hebrews 11. And I, I, I believe it's a Hebrews 11, verse 5. I'm just going to go there quickly. It's verse 5. And uh, from uh, the Amplified. Hallelujah. 11, verse 5, it says this. By faith. That pleased God by faith that pleased God. Enoch was caught up and taken to heaven so that he would not have a glimpse of death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received a testimony still on record that he had walked with God and pleased him. It's all about pleasing God. But, and then it goes on to say, in the context of that, but without faith, it is impossible to walk with God and please him. Without faith, for whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him. And so we know that it's an earnestly, diligently seeking God that matters to God. It's about pursuing him with all our hearts. And we know and we are acquainted with the scriptures um, from Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. What things? Things that even the unsaved desire, God knows that we have need of those things. But he says, don't seek those things first. Don't seek your checklist first. Don't go to the things that society or the world dictates. These are the, the, the medals of achievement or what represents success or represents, well, success. See, some people may see the world's achievements and accolades as true success, but true success is being obedient in your walk with other. When you're blessed to be a blessing, when you're empowered for service, that is the true walk with God. Doing those things that are right in the sight of God is being a true blessing. That's what God enjoyed. That's about faith. That's about faith in knowing that as I trust God, God's going to give me the best. It's just about trust. It's not about trying to understand why I'm going through this or why I haven't got this. It's just about loving God and knowing that he's a good, good father. He's the best person that you could ever, ever have been acquainted with. Because he's eternal God, he's great Jehovah. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He's the omnipotent God. 
all powerful? Is the omniscient, omniscient God all knowing? Is the omni, omnipresent God? Is everywhere? God is just God all by himself, but he's talking about an intimacy of relationship where you know that God is everything and is all that you will ever need. Jehovah, through his son, Jesus Christ. If it is that you never had any of your prayer list <laughs> answered, would you still love God? Would you have the same fervency and desire towards God? Would you actually have an unbelief towards God that is who he says he says he is? God is God, irrespective of what you think about him. He still remains God. And I'd rather just stand on the promises of God than say, you know what, God, I've had a checklist here for so long. And at the end of the day, hardly any of them are mentioned. I thank God for every waking moment of your life. You can thank God that you're alive. For every waking moment of your life, you can thank God for his mighty provisions in your life. I don't care what it is. But his grace is sufficient to keep us. So even in our weakness, even when we're weak, we can say we are strong. Why am I talking like this? Because I realize that life isn't all about self-ambition. Life is about knowing truly the will of God. And you know something? God bless Grace. God bless Grace. I love her dearly. But, you know, as a woman, and I know as a woman, she would desire many things. You know something? And, you know, if it was down to me alone, and I say if it was down to me alone, I would want to please her in every area of her desires and her wishes. But I know that as much as I love her, I love God first and foremost. And there are things that we have sacrificed as a couple that I know that if it was based on my gift and her gift alone, we would have them. If it was based on self selfishness, we would have them. In other words, not seeing needs of just blocking our eyes and saying, nope, this is on our tick list. We have to have that. We're going to buy this. We're going to get that house. We're going to acquire that business. And if it, if it was down to our self ambition, you know, and we talk about being focused, we would have those things, but it's not about that. Because what one thing I do know is that everything God has desired for our lives according to his will is always made supernatural provision for us. And it's not about, you know what? I went and studied for this. I went and trained for this. I went and uh, <laughs> paid for this. It's about God, you did it because of your great love. And it was a miracle that it happened. So we can only testify of God's, God's goodness and his grace. It's not about the education. It was never about that. Look, I've been to uni. Yes, I've achieved a lot of things, but it's not about that. It's about obedience, more importantly, obeying God's will for your life, coming into alignment with God's will for your life. That's the most important thing. We got a way of, look, um, even as I'm talking here now, I, I thinking about um, Paul. Paul was, uh, rather than me talk about it, let me just go there. Um, and if we just go to um, Philippians, um, if we just, Philippians um, chapter three and verse four, this is Paul speaking, and he says, though I myself have some grounds for confidence in the flesh, if I were pursuing salvation by works, if anyone else thinks that he has reason to be confident in the flesh, that is in his own efforts to achieve salvation, I have far more. <laughs> you know, he's quality, he, he was a legalist. He, he was the one that was very religious and he was very passionate about his faith. 
And so he studied as, and he was, I believe he was a Sahedrin, but he was well qualified. Well qualified in so many different areas. And he says this in verse five, circumcised when I was eight days old of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, an exemplary Hebrew as to the observance of the law, a Pharisee, he was a Pharisee. He observed the law to the letter of the law. As to my zeal for Jewish tradition, a persecutor of the church, Jewish tradition, by tradition, he persecuted the church, God's people. Even Jesus said, why persecuteth me, Saul? Why do you persecute me? A persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness, supposed right living, which my fellow Jews believe is in the law, I prove myself blameless. You know what? God saw a quality in, in um, Saul. He said, you know what? This guy's so single-minded that he believes that he believes that he believes that if I can touch his heart wow. and he received Christ, you know that he could have the same passion for me. And here he is expressing the same passion. Mm -hmm. The same passion that he had as regards to all the things that he achieved in his life. He's now sharing that passion of knowing Christ. And he says in verse 7, but whatever former things were gains to me as I fought then, these things once regarded as achievement, as advancements in merit, I have come to consider as loss, absolutely worthless for the sake of Christ and for the purpose which he has given my life. For the purpose that Christ has given his life, the purpose that came to him. Why? Because of the love of Jesus Christ. It wasn't about his qualification. It wasn't about his status it wasn't about his recognition it wasn't about his fame it wasn't about any of those things it was about what christ did in and through him that was the most important thing and so it was a put important for me him to be obedient to christ and to do the will of the father and he says here but verse eight, more than that, I count everything as loss compared to the priceless privilege and the supreme advantage of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord, and, gr and of growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him, a joy unequal. Let me tell you something, a joy unequal. I'm not talking about happiness. Many of us, we talk about doing, accomplishing things that will make us happy. It's momentary. It's fleeting. We have desires in our flesh that will only be, it will be momentary. The, the desire is there, you conquer, and then the desire is gone and there's a sense of emptiness. What was all that about? It's not that great a deal. But here it is. In knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him, a joy unequal, for his sake I've lost everything. He says he's lost everything. Could you afford to lose everything for the purpose of doing God's will, for loving Christ, for loving God? I have lost everything, everything that he esteemed as being dear to him, as being a vital necessity to him, as something that he would hold up as a trophy. It, he lost all of that for Christ. For his sake, I have lost everything and I consider it all garbage, rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. I may, may gain Christ. How do you gain Christ? By putting all these things, personal things, secondary. How do you maintain peace, true peace and joy? Through intimacy with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. 
Christianity is very simple, but we complicate it because we will hear a lot of things and a lot of messages about go get it, go do this, go. There's nothing. There are nothing in comparison to just loving God. Love is expressed. We, I spoke about yesterday. Faith, faith without works are dead, being alone, are being alone. You show me your faith and I show you my works. Your work has to be tangible. Tangible in the presence of God. It has to be an active faith. It's about if you know that you love God and you have faith in God, anything happens. You still have faith in God and trust in God, you know, because nothing shall pluck you out of his hand. You are in the security, divine security of God. So what are you worrying about? Cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Be anxious for nothing, but in supplication with prayer, with thanksgiving, just make your request be known unto God and the God of peace. Hallelujah. The God of peace. The God of peace will present himself. The, what are you agitated for? Why are you agitated? Could it be a trust issue? Could it be a surrender issue? Have you really given everything to God? As you, look, you've got to count those things that be not as though they are. In other words, when God is ready, according to you, I receive it. You look, just receive that is best for God. On behalf of God, just receive the best that God wants for your life. It's a plan. Uh, it's not the plan of man that will be fulfilled, but it's a plan of God for your life that will be fulfilled. And you've just got to know that. So when you God is gracious enough that even when you ask for a fish, he will not give you a stone. He'll just say, ah, oh, I love you so much. Ah, oh, here you are. But is that God's will for your life? Is that God's will for your life? It's important that we have that relationship with God. And I say, I'll say a lot of things. Many people won't like me talking like this because you know what? Ah, not that again. It's not about relationship again. It's not about fellowship again. It's not, look, that's the only way you have security in God when you put him first. True security comes in knowing the father and the son, Jesus Christ. And knowing that you are completely emptied to his will. And so what does um what does Paul continue to say? And let me just read verse eight again and going down. But more than that, I count everything as loss compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ. The supreme advantage. There's a supreme advantage of knowing Christ. And I'm not talking about reading the Bible, knowing the script words in the Bible. I'm talking about an intimate relationship with God, knowing him. That word knowing is you can um, relate to even having intercourse. You become one because of intimacy with the father and the son which gives you the great peace that you we all desire great peace a peace on the inside that nothing moves you yes there might be momentary um, a reaction but you know something the peace of god is umpire in my soul and he says keep calm son i i've got it for you i'm i've got it I've got your back. I've got every situation that you're going through. I know what's going to happen because of your faith, because I want to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can even ask, think, imagine, or even dream according to the power that works in you. Relationship, love, 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 and love some more. Be emptying, 
Don't quantify your love. Be giving. Be giving. And he says, and may be found in him, believing and relying on him, not having any righteousness of my own derived from my obedience to the law or its rituals, but possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the righteous which comes from God on the basis of faith. So everything comes from the basis of faith. Faith is your found, firm foundation. Faith. And faith is an active word. It's not a passive word. It's an active word. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. I like to close with um, two scriptures. And uh, Jude 20, 21 says this. But you, beloved, build yourself up on the fountain, on the foundation of your most holy faith. Continually progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, pray in the Holy Spirit. Let me just pause there. Pray in the Holy Spirit means be led by the Spirit of God to pray. Now, if you're led by the Spirit of God to pray, you're gonna pray unselfish prayers. Pray in the spirit. So whether you're praying in tongues, whether you're praying led by the spirit of God, in specific prayers, you're praying unselfishly. It's not about I, me, and myself. Pray in the spirit, Let be led by the spirit. And it says this in verse 21, and keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God waiting anxiously and look, looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring you to eternal life. Which will bring you to eternal life. Life everlasting, the God kind of life, a life lived in eternity with Christ. It brings you to eternal life. It's maximized in your relationship, in your intimacy. Praise be to God. And you know, there's so many scriptures that I can relate to that talks about relationship. Even going back to Philippians, it says in verse, 12. It says, not that I have already obtained. Philippians 3 and verse 12. It says, not that I have already obtained it, this goal of being Christ like. This is Paul speaking. Or I have already been made perfect. But I actively, this one thing I do in the, in the King James. But one thing I do, one thing I do, this was very important to Paul, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Could it be that even Paul had a revelation of Enoch who was translated into the presence of God? Could it be that through observing this great pantheon of faith, this great person of faith, that he could have said, you know what, if I just keep Focus on my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a higher call <laughs> than dying and being resurrected again. But what it is, it's about relationship. It comes down to relationship again. Forgetting those things, forgetting, 
many of us, we don't forget things because we're always bringing up the past and saying, if this, if that, you, you that, you this. Let me say something to you. People, let me say, say something about the love of God. People can do the worst things for you, towards you. They can talk about you. They can lie about you. They can say all manner of things about you. But when the love of God is reigning in your heart and you purpose that, you know what? I'm going to live by the spirit of God, but expressing the love of God as the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart, in your heart by the Holy Spirit. When you make that decision, you have to position yourself in Christ. Do you know that you can connect with that person? And it's though whatever they've done to you, it never has any weight or any significance over your life. In other words, <laughs> it's like it never happened. I know that. I'm not talking heary, heary theory stuff. I know that for a fact that you can forgive if you will to. Because if you position yourself in love, in the love of Christ, you'll be able to drop things up. Things will drop up. The devil says, what are you doing? Don't you know what these people done to you? They have no right being in your company. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. But you know, the love of God just says, I love you. I forgive you. It's like it never happened. Your best buddies. Best buddies. What are you talking about? Yes, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. You're thinking to yourself, Chris, don't go down there again. I can only do so much. When people rub you up the wrong way, just be gracious. Forgive as Christ also forgave you. Release them. Release them to God. Let God deal with them. You'd be surprised. A weight of burden will be lifted off of you. But don't keep harping on the things that were done in the past. Even Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching out to those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. God is not a God up there is waiting to punish you for every slip that you make, for every mistake that you make, for every sin that you make. He's not there waiting for that, but he's giving you enough grace and enough room to come boldly onto the throne of grace that you may attain mercy and find grace, his enabling power, his, power, his loving kindness, his favor, his love to help in a time of need. God is there to meet you at your point. The God of comfort and the God of mercy knows what you're going through. Paul suffered a lot of things. He was not the picture of success from a world's perspective. He had many testimonies of suffering, but he counted it all joy. <laughs> Don't say me that. Don't tell me that. I'd rather do without it. Look, if you love God, Jesus even said, if you suffer, if you love Christ, you're going to suffer like him. You're going to suffer. Christ suffered. He was a good man. He suffered. We will suffer also. But there's a blessing in our suffering. There's a great reward through suffering for Christ. There's an eternal reward for suffering through Christ. And I just want to really just encourage you all. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And if I could just check, finish on this uh, scripture. It's Ephesians 6. And you know, we, we talk about, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, 
rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah, we know all that and we can even quote that scripture. But the reality, we do. And even when we suffer things and things don't always go, always go our way, sometimes we can complain. We're dissatisfied. We're unease, at ill ease with ourselves and at ill ease with other people and at e ill ease with society on a whole. And you find you can look at things and you can blame everything other than yourself because true peace is found in God. But look here what it says. Having gone through all the different aspects of the armor, the most important one, and this is for every one of us, because we're a family this evening, this afternoon. And it says, with all prayer and petition, pray. And this is Ephesians 6, verse 18. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times. At all times. This is what I mentioned earlier on. On every occasion on it don't leave god out on any and every occasion be mindful of god's presence on every occasion in every season whatever season you're going through you might be going through a barren season at this moment in time but pray with us that's that specific prayer mm -hmm. into your situation and know that the God of comfort and the God of mercy mm -hmm. is not left you and he's not forsaken you. He's there where you are at this moment and he understands. Mm -hmm. And he even sends angels as ministers of mercy onto the hills of salvation, ministers of his purpose and his grace to help and to support us and to strengthen us. But more importantly, we have the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us that will guide us into all truth. But we have to be attentive to listen and to hear and develop that relationship. And so with all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests. Specific, be specific. Don't dilly dally, or, or shall I say, wishy washy, and say, be specific. Know that you're in the Father's will and that you can decree and declare a thing and it shall be done in the name of Jesus. You have that authority. Decree and declare it and say, mm -hmm. no, if, they, if it's your will. Once you're in God, and you're having a relationship with God and you're loving, you put him first. You know it's in his will because God will lead and direct you. Know that God will lead and direct you in every situation, give you the answers that is best for you. Remember, it's God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Notice that any good thing God gives you is not there to destroy you, but to elevate you and enhance your relationship with him and it says um on every occasion and every season in the spirit remember i um i read jude 20 in the spirit and with this in view stay alert with all perseverance and petition interceding in prayer for all god's people all remember every person take a note of people on this platform people that come on people that are missing people even i have to do that i have to do that not even i but i have to do that if i haven't done it before i need to do that before because life is fragile you could be here today and gone tomorrow and it could have been your prayer you standing in the gap for your brother and sister that may have preserved their life through your faith and your trust and your walk with God. Your walk with God is important to me because when you pray the prayer of faith, as the word of God says, confess your faults one to another, pray one for another, that you may be healed, set free and delivered. Because the prayer of faith is dynamic 
in all its working. It's dynamic. It does things that ordinary prayers cannot do. The prayer of faith. And, and verse 19 says, Paul said this, Paul, the great man of faith, he said, and pray for me that words may be given me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of salvation, for which I am an ab ambassador in chains. Ambassador in chains. You know, you can be representing God and you're, you're feeling like, boy, I can't do anything else. I'm like I'm in change. I can't do my own will. I have to do what God wills me to do. God first. I'm sorry, I love you, but God first. You're an ambassador in change. It's the chains of love that constrains you to look beyond yourself and see the needs of other people. It's selfless in everything. That's, remember Paul became all things to all men that he might win them to Christ. That was his passion. That was his view, that was his vision, winning souls for Christ. <laughs> Remarkable. And some, we, some of us, we are saved, yet we will never share the gospel with someone that we come into contact with, the good news of Jesus Christ. And he says, and pray for me that the words, that words may be given to me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of salvation, for which I am an ambassador in chains, and I pray that in proclaiming it, I may, I may speak boldly and courageously as I should. So even Paul had to ask for prayer, that he speak boldly, and that's a prayer for each and every one of us. And so I bless you this afternoon i thank god for your love and your patience and just say keep on loving keep on giving keep on putting god first god is mindful of everything that you're going through in fact god already knows the future of your life it's all mapped out but it's predicated also on your obedience. If you obey, God will. There's things that you've yet to accomplish. And God has an assignment for your life that is way above what you're even dreaming of right now. What you're asking for right is way above that. It exceeds your own vision for your life. You may be going through challenges where it would be spiritual, where it be mo emotional, whether it be mental or even physical or financial or material or relational, whatever the challenges you're going through, remember this, God wants the very best for each and every one of you. And so if you put God first, seek him with all your heart, desire him as your vital necessity, as your, your gold, as your diamond treasure, know this that god will take care of every situation in your life and i just really want to encourage you all this afternoon don't despair god has not given up on you don't despair things have never happened in your time scale but don't despair keep on keeping on keep on trusting keep on believing keep on relying keep on depending on him Keep on having confidence in him. God, and I say it again, God has not called you to understand everything. He's just called you to trust him with all your heart. And as uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust him with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding or your own insight. But in everything you do, acknowledge him. Even in your midst, everything you do, anything you do, acknowledge God, be perceptive that God is in your midst and he will make straight and direct your path. He will make a way where there's seemingly no way. It's about trusting him. That's the faith that we rely on.
that's the faith that is spoken about in Hebrews 11. All the pantheons of greats of faith that are mentioned there, they trusted God and it was a practical thing. You don't trust God by worrying and looking stressed out and everything. That's not trust. Full trust is just leaning back in his arms, knowing that, that whatever the situation, God, even if I'm absent from the body in a moment, I'm still present with you. I'm in a win-win situation, Lord. So who, who really cares as long as I'm obedient to do your will? That's the most important thing. And so let your ambitions, let your visions, let your passion be God's passion, God's vision, and God's will. Let it be that, that comes through love. I bless you all. I bless you all. I bless you all. And so in remembering our dear sister. So for those of you who have just come on, um, okay, for those of you who have come on, um, I mentioned it earlier that our dear sister in Christ has passed on. And um, Pansy, and uh, Pansy, you, you may not know, but she is on the platform and she usually signed herself in as HP. And, um, and HP meaning spelling out her name, Pansy, and her surname. But the thing is, is this, is that she's passed on and we prayed. And I just want to share that with you. And, uh, and I, so even today, this um, message, this, uh, the, what I've shared this afternoon has great relevance because you know what? The, at the end of all of it, we've got to say, like Paul, I've, I've run the race, I've kept the faith, I've finished my course, finish my course, finish my assignment, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, but not only which the righteous judge shall give me, Christ himself, but not only for me, but for all those that love his, his appearance. In other words, when you don't have... If you're fearful about death, if you're fearful about that transition from life as we know it in the, in the physical body to life eternal, then there's still an area in your life that you have to totally surrender to God. Because you know what? Whether I'm here or not, <laughs> I'm in a win-win situation. And for all of you, it's the same. Once you have that revelation, you're sealed for eternity because God, is first and foremost in your life. And I just really want to share that with you. Our dear sister, Pansy has passed on. It was a sense of great shock to me because I spoke to her on Friday and I prayed with her. And, uh, but you know, God is sovereign. And, uh, but as I said, mentioned earlier that there are things that we desire and God allows us to fulfill our desires. And then once our desires are even feel, fulfilled, God says, well, your purpose here on earth has finished. I'm taking you on. And one thing I always say, we cannot always decide when we go and how we go. But one thing we know that we shall go. And having said that, there's a contradiction in scripture with Enoch. <laughs> who was translated because of his personal relationship and intimate relationship with God. He walked in total, total, absolutely total obedience to God. And that was counted as faith. So he con what's that saying to me? He trusted God to the nth degree in every situation he undertook. And God says, uh, you know what? Just skip death, come straight to heaven. 
I'd like to think that. I'd like to think that of each and every one of you, that you can live a surrendered life, a life of total emptying that God says, come on home, I'm ready for you. And it's like, what, where, where am I? You're in the presence of almighty God. Your loved ones behind hasn't even got, don't have to worry about funeral costs or anything like that or anything. You're just gone. All I would say to you that if you can, and I say this with wisdom, if you can make preparation. And when I say make preparation, make preparation for those that you leave behind, if you can. And I'm saying if you don't leave them with a burden of paying for your funeral bills and all that type of thing. If you can take out a little insurance, not for you, but for those that are left behind, so they don't take up that burden. Do some, we can all do practical things that will assist because we love people, not that we want it to our way, but because of the love that we have for our loved ones, we can do things that will be a blessing to them, even in your passing, do that. If you're aspiring to be translated like Enoch, I understand that. But remember this, we came into this world empty and surely we'll leave this world the same way we came in. In other words, we can't take our possessions with us. That is left for somebody else. So make preparation, that's all I'm gonna say. Make, prepar make preparations while you can because some people don't, and it only serves to bring confusion after they're gone. And there's a lot of infighting in terms of family. There's a lot of things that hatred and division that goes on, and uh, it's not good. I've seen it so many times and I've been with, um, having to minister at um, funerals where I know at the background there's all this infighting so be a blessing. Everything you do, just be a blessing. Be a blessing. Look to empower people. Empower them in Jesus' name. So thank you, every one of you. Um, so true. Okay. Um, we're going to take the offering. And I just pray before we close. We are going to close. Um, and uh, I just want um, all of you just... Um, just to remember God in your, in, in your giving. Give as unto God. Take a time out to say, you know what, God? You know, I can give into everything. I can give into my insurance. I can give into my house bills, my mortgage, my rent and all that. I can give all these things. But first, I have to recognize that you are Lord. And without you, and you are God and without you I can do absolutely nothing and sometimes we have to remember that without God we are absolutely nothing and God gives us the strength the ability to work or the ability to receive so whatever you do just be thankful and say God I'm giving this I'm giving it as unto you because I'm yeah. thankful to you that I have life and I have a purpose every yes. single one of you have a purpose and I say to you now that even this platform has a purpose. God birthed this platform. God birthed this church. God birthed the ministry. And it has a purpose to touch lives. And in the reality of it, we can thank God. And we can thank God because of the grace of God. The grace of God has kept us going. But we know that it is an opportunity for every one of you to sow into something that you believe is important, that we should continue to keep going by the grace of God. Amen. And so I'm going to ask Keith to just minister to us by song, and he's going to put the details up, bank details, and we're just going to continue to thank God. And I really love each and every one of you. And uh, I say this today, that anything I can do, by the grace of God, Grace and I, we will do. 
praise be to God. So bless you. Bless you, every one of you. I'm just going to um, pray right now before Keith prays that music. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray for the, the what I've shared today. And I'm also going to pray a blessing over everybody that is uh, here in the hearing of my voice and uh, I has a mind to give right now. Heavenly Father, I just thank you again. I thank you because you're an awesome God. You are a miracle working God. You are a loving God. You're a good God. You're a good, good Father. And you care for every one of our needs, Father. Father, you are the God of comfort. And you are the God of peace. You are the God of mercy. You are the God of love. God, you are love. You are the ultimate expression of love. And through your son, Jesus Christ, it was demonstrated here on earth in the flesh. A man that was tempted as we are, tried and tested in every area from a human capacity, yet he remained without sin. And because of that, because of what he accomplished through his death and resurrection, today, each and every one of us can come boldly and confidently onto the throne of grace. We don't have to shrink back with nervousness or a sense of we ain't worthy, but we can come boldly because of what Jesus accomplished through the shedding of his blood and through his resurrection. We can come boldly and say, God, Jesus, help me right now in a time of, time of need, even where I'm found wanting in unbelief. I mean, my faith has been shaken in so many areas, Father. God, I'm praying that you may make me resolute in my spirit, mm. strong, stand strong in the midst of me right now. Mm. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every Jesus. spirit of fear and intimidation, Jesus. anxiety, worry or stress yes. that will come because of the sense of not knowing what the future is. So the fear of future, the fear of the unknown. Jesus. Father, I rebuke that and I come against that spirit right Jesus. now in the name of this fear of lack, the fear of insufficiency, not being able to meet the needs that I'm presented with each day. Father, I pray that you're the God whose hand is not short that you cannot reach, you. Or it, whose ears are not deaf that you cannot hear, but Father, you know all things. And Father, you continually rock back and forth, looking at within the capacity of time. And you can see our futures. And our future is a good future in you, that we don't always recognize it and we're not conscious of it, that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit as we continue to trust you, trust, have confidence in you. We need to please you. And we need to please you through active faith. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. In spite mm. of what happens, Father God, say, I will trust you. I will trust you. As I know that you never leave me or forsake me. You. Never leave me destitute, embarrassed, mm -hmm. ashamed. Yeah. Let me down, Father. You'll always be there. Comforting me, protecting me, providing for me. But Father, I recognize it's about relationship. And so Father, I dedicate myself and I consecrate myself unto you, even as you have done it through the blood of Jesus. I will recognize that you done the best work first. You are the one that loved me before I loved you. And so I thank, I'm thankful today that even I can even take time out to give you thanks and acknowledge your love by saying, Father, I give back unto you as a, as a symbol of my recognition, as a gratitude of saying, thank you, Lord, for my life. That my life is not mean of meaningless, but it's meaningful because Christ dwells in me. And so, Father, I celebrate and we all celebrate that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so, Father, I thank you that even as we, Father, lay the foundation in our giving and give the best. 
Father, truly, you will do the rest, as you always do, do it. Father, we thank you for that. I thank you for that. I thank you for that. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your joy. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. We thank you, Lord. The word of God says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. In all things, we give God thanks. Not because we enjoy whatever trials we're going through, but we know that God, you've always, many other afflictions of the righteous, but you deliver us out of them all. That's the joy of knowing that deliverance is always at hand because it's already done. And so, Father, we thank you again. Thank you for remembering our, our lives. Thank you for remembering the lives of our family, our loved ones, our children, our friends. Thank you, Father God, that even as we step out in obedience and do what you instruct us to do, Father, instruct me to do, Father, you will confirm your word through each and every one of us with signs following because of your great love. And so bless you, Father. Bless those hands. Bless those store baskets. Bless and meet every need, I pray. Yes, according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You, Jesus. Father, we know you, that our Thank love and our you, faith Lord. is exemplified Lord. in action. Lord. In action. So let us act today in obedience Thank to you. Lord. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful, and precious name. We say thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. amen. Before you, before I'm, I'm just, um, before you go any further, I just want to share something. As I was praying, um, I, I remember someone, I met someone last night and Grace was speaking to this young lady, a remarkable lady. And um, she's, um, I say she's suffering from cancer but grace you can relate it from the perspective that you you were having this interaction with her but it's a, she shared remarkable faith go ahead grace um i met this um young lady yesterday and um she was telling me that she's got thyroid cancer of the throat um and she's saying that i said are you having any treatment and she said um she's been praying and trusting god and the swelling has just gone significantly um down and she said that she's she's got a, such a great joy now than before she had the illness and, I'm, and I'm, she goes that she's got such a peace and such a joy just knowing that god is still sovereign and god is gonna do uh, um, her healing and she's trusting God and I didn't see not one bit of anxiety or worry or anything that would cause her to look concerned she looked so I just said to her I I, I admire you because she was so strong in her faith and she said God is gonna do it and you know I just I, I was just sharing that with Curses, I think, was what Jesus would say. Great faith. <laughs> I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel. I remember Jesus saying that to the centurion. But this um, <clears throat> young lady was um, show expressed remarkable faith and trust in God. That I thought it was exemplary. Such joy. She had such joy. She wasn't downcast. She was no. actually saying it and I, I could see it was coming out of her spirit it wasn't paying lip service to i trust god it was actually a joy that was emanating from her and i just want you to i just want to say to each and every one of us just keep on keeping on develop that relationship with god that you know that you know that you know that you know that whatever is promised is more than able to do and he will do it the way that he decides that he's going to do it and but remember God is always on your side. He's working in your corner. So bless you. I just felt I needed to share that because I was really moved by her testimony as she shared it with me also. And um, I'm just saying, God.
God is still on the throne. And this person spoke about taking no medication, but standing on the word of God and the joy that and the peace that she felt or she knows that resides on the inside of her. And uh, so it, it, it is possible to go through things that quote unquote, um, man may diagnose over you or even confess over your life, but know this, that God is truth. Jesus is truth and uh, he's able to heal, set free and deliver. So bless you. Um, we're gonna have that song and we're gonna have um, the details that will come up on the screen. So just giving you an opportunity again to minister in your giving. Amen.